Hey everybody, welcome back. We are underneath a subsection of microeconomics called Theory of the Firm, huge subsection. Inside of that, there's a unit called Market Structures, that's what we're on, and then there's a subunit called Perfect Competition, which is the type of market structure that we're on. So we're taking a very close look at the market structure, Perfect Competition. We're looking at, yes, the market, but what we ultimately want to know is things about the firm. What we're doing in this video is perfect competition says profit. What that means is this particular firm is going to be making a profit. And let me just uh, jump to a conclusion right off the bat, guys. If a perfectly competitive firm is making a profit, you're in the short run, okay? Because there are no profits and no losses, neither profits nor losses in the long run for perfectly competitive firms because of the no barriers to entry, okay? No barriers to entry. You can come in and go out of this market at will if you are a supplier, and for that reason, in the long run, no profits, no losses, okay? So, you see profit, you're saying, hey, we're in the short run. Here we go. Got a side-by-side -side analysis, which means the vertical axis is calibrated the exact same, and the key, the reason we do side-by-side -side analysis for perfect competition, is that we need to know the price the firm is going to face or what, what price they're gonna have to charge. And we have to draw the market because the market determines the price. So grab that little intersection point between supply and demand. Hopefully we fully understand why that is going to give us the quantity market and the price market. There's all kinds of ways we call that price. Price equilibrium, market clearing price, yada yada. It's price market, right? So that's our price market, the firm. Since there is no product differentiation, they are selling the exact same good as everybody else. And because, hey, there's tons of potential and actual suppliers, they have no power over price. They are a price taker. We draw this across, price firm. And that is not just the price, it's also the demand curve the firm faces, okay? Perfectly elastic, perfectly responsive buyers to this firm's product. What does that mean? If they try to raise the price at all, coin demand is gonna to go to zero, okay? They have no pricing power, once again, Guys, if they try to raise the price, there's no product differentiation. The same exact product's being sold right over there by somebody else, and there's plenty of somebody else, okay? So there's our demand firm. Now, this is also the marginal revenue curve. The price, okay, that the firm faces is the additional revenue we get for producing another unit of the goods. So demand is the marginal revenue curve. We also know that the marginal cost curve eventually slopes upward. Now this time I had a little Nike swish, okay? Guys, marginal cost, we can draw it kind of with a Nike swish with a down and then an up portion, or we just draw it up, okay? We do both here at Econ Busters because both are uh, just fine and are perfectly right. What I'm saying, guys, marginal cost curves usually go down and then go up, but we're going to be normally producing in that upward solution, sloping portion of the marginal cost curve. So there we go, we got marginal cost, marginal revenue. Why do we need those curves? Because we make decisions at the output, at the output. We make decisions at the margin. What decision is this firm needing to make? How much to produce? We know the price. We've got MC and MR. How much are you gonna produce? You're gonna produce as long as your MR is above your MC. You will produce every single unit for which your MR is above your MC. You will not produce any unit or any of these for which your MR is less than your MC. So once MC gets above MR, don't produce those goods. That is our Q profit max. Now what I will oftentimes do is I'm going to take this all the way up. For this particular graph, it's not going to be important that I'm showing this entire reference. Now it's a vertical line, but I just wanna be very clear. When you see like a dashed vertical line, it's not this they're trying to show you. When they see a dashed vertical line, they're trying to show you that, okay? They're trying to show you that horizontal distance, okay? That must be a really important horizontal distance, and it is. This is the quantity where the firm profit maximizes. Okay, the reason you tuned in was for this, to see a firm making a profit. I just want you to fully understand what we're doing. Here it comes. To, to show profit or loss, I need the average total cost curve, okay? To show profit or loss, I must add in 
the average total cost curve. I got a couple constraints, okay? First of all, ATC has to be going down if MC is below it, okay? So I've gotta be going down till I hit MC. Now, once I pass where I've connected to MC, I've gotta stay below MC, of course, and it's gotta be going up because MC is now greater than ATC. But there's another important thing. That dot, there's a reason I drew that dash vertical, okay? This output is so doggone important. That dot right there, I'm gonna make it super big for you. That dot and that dot, those are two very important dots. This is my ATC. So, at that level of output, my average total cost is that vertical distance, okay? I put a dot there, that's minimum ATC, but it's not the most important dot on the ATC line. This one is far more important for this particular problem that we're doing. So, at that level of output, this vertical is the ATC. Now just think about this for a second. If your price, if the firm's price, is above the average total cost, what are they making? They're making a profit, right? What's price? Price is per unit revenue. If the per unit revenue for every unit you produce is greater than the average total cost for all those units, then guess what? You're making a profit. Let me say it this way. This vertical, price firm, times this horizontal, which is the quantity, price times horizontal. Well, what is this box right there? That's total revenue. Now, this vertical, from here to here, okay, from there to there, that's average total cost times quantity. Same quantity, right? There's the quantity. How do we find the quantity? That was that whole marginal analysis, MRMC thing, right? So times this quantity, ATC times quantity. What is that box? That is total cost. Well, if this big box right there, the bigger box is total revenue, and the smaller red box, okay, is total cost, well, what is total profit? It's right there. It's that rectangle. It's that whole rectangle right there, which should make sense because we know they're making that vertical distance from there to there is their per unit profits because it's the amount price exceeds average total cost. And they're making that amount of per unit profit, think vertically, think vertically, all the way to right there. And so that rectangle right there is their total profit. And there you go. That is a perfectly competitive firm making a profit. Hopefully that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.